Hi, everybody. Hi, as you're trickling in, uh, we'll we'll introduce ourselves again later. Um, but I am Gelmi from the Mass Cultural Council, and I'm here with uh, my peers, Jay Wong and Hanako Brace. Uh, and we will we'll talk some more. But thanks for coming. Thanks for um, being present on a on a you know 6 p.m. with us. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we hope to answer any and all questions you have. Jay, do you get many disruptions from your dogs during meetings? No, it's mainly Cheeto, the cat. <laughs> Got it. That makes sense. The cat, the cat's more likely to jump up to the desk. Yeah, my cat is right here, and then my dog is below me. <laughs> no, my cat's too anxious. Every time I like sit in this chair. And it like creaks, she just like bolts out of the room immediately. Aww. <laughs> She's skittish. Yeah. She's so skittish, man. So like, because I don't I don't like close any doors really. Um she'll just like bonk a door open. <laughs> she goes like Everybody... sprawled out. Yeah. I wish I could Everybody show. is I see some hands are raised. If you have any questions before uh, before we get started, feel free to put them in the Q and A or uh, into the text chat. Um, once we get the ball rolling, uh, once once the webinar has really started, um, feel free to utilize the Q and A function. That way, any questions that come up, uh, we don't miss them, and we can be sure to answer all of your questions before everyone leaves. Um, but I think we'll get started right at six and then people will trickle in and that's A-OK. -okay. Sharing my screen. Um, all right, everybody. Um, it's six o'clock. Thank you for all of our participants for joining. Um, we really appreciate you making time to be here and we hope to answer any and all questions that you have. Um, I will be taking us through the webinar today. We will be going through almost everything that you'll need to know to apply for a local cultural council grant. Um, and anything that you don't know by the end of it, we are always available and happy and ready to talk to you all. Um, before we get started, I wanted everybody to know we have closed captioning services turned on for this webinar. You can turn them on by clicking the CC button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we're also recording this and we will be making it available for you all later to review or send to anybody who wasn't in attendance. Uh, again, if you have any questions or comments during the webinar, please feel free to put them in the Q&A box. Uh, a staff member on the team will respond. Uh, with us today, we have Hanako Brace and Jay Wong, who are both also my uh, peers on the communities team. Uh, and then, you know, if we have time, maybe we'll address some questions at the end as well. So let's get started. Um, so today's presentation, uh, I'm going to be walking you through the FAQs uh, about the guidelines um, and going through uh, any questions you might have. But first, I wanted to introduce our communities team. Um, Lisa Simmons is our program manager, on, and here's the rest of our team and our contact information available. Um, all of us work uh, with different regions and different communities. I myself uh, am working with the greater Merrimack Valley and the Metro West regions. Um, we are always available. You don't have to know which one you have to email to, oh, I don't wanna email the wrong person. Email any of us. 
uh, we'll refer you to who's, you know, who's in charge of that region or who can give you more information. Um, but this is just some of our uh, background info. Um, um, yeah, so today's presentation, I've got this agenda up for all of us. Um, you're going to get an introduction to the Local Cultural Council program. I'm going to be providing some examples of some funded projects. We'll be looking at our timeline, the review of guidelines for applying, the overview for the application process. And if we have some time at the very end, uh, we'll hang out for a little bit and do some more Q&A. We're the Massachusetts Cultural Council. Uh, if you're not familiar with our state arts agency, our goal is to promote excellence, inclusion, education, and diversity in the arts, humanities, and sciences, and fostering a rich cultural life for all mass residents and contributing to the vitality of our communities and economy. Uh, the Mass Cultural Council has a number of different grants, initiatives, advocacy for individual artists, communities, uh, local cultural councils, uh, cultural districts, festivals, etc. We receive an annual appropriation from the state legislature and funds from the National Endowment for the Arts, as well as a few others. Uh, if you do have questions about Mass Cultural Council and you want to explore more of our offerings, please visit our website, massculturalcouncil.org. So a little bit about this specific program. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it is the largest grassroots cultural funding network in the United States. There are 329 local cultural councils that serve every city and town. Currently, there's more than 2,400 volunteers serving statewide. Each council is made up of municipally appointed volunteers, uh, with the exception of some cities like Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, Northampton, and a few others. Uh, the program itself was formed in 1990 through a merger of two previously separate agency, uh, Council on the Arts and Humanities and the Massachusetts Arts Lottery Council. Uh, this program specifically receives its funding from the state legislature and the NEA, the National Endowment of the Arts. Um, basically, these funds go to individuals, uh, oh, sorry, basically these funds go to projects that are related to the arts, humanities, and sciences, which provide a public benefit. Uh, the amount of money allocated to each community is determined by using the state's local aid formulas established by the legislature. Uh, and here we just have a little photo of an Arlington Porch Fest in 2022. Um, examples of LCC funded projects. So this is a question we get a lot from potential applicants uh, about what are some examples of projects uh, and like really what's possible. The short of it is, Talk to your LCC, see if that's something that they'd be able to work with you on, uh, see if that's something they'd be interested in. Um, I'll, I'll go on later. We'll talk more about how to reach out to your local cultural council. Uh, but for now, this is just kind of like a very broad view of a lot of things. Um, the Quincy Arts Council supported the Quincy Symphony Orchestra in their 69th season of programming. Uh, the QSO performed three classical concerts as well as holiday, outdoor, and family-centered concerts. Uh, West Stockbridge were involved in the creation of the Zucchini Festival, uh, which began from a local legend. The council was looking for a festival of their own that would be a fun time for everybody to enjoy. Uh, it's a way to celebrate their town, both old and new, and for people to spend time together. Brockton Cultural Council supported the Old Colony YMCA and their Kids Connect After School program. Uh, that focus is on mental health, violence prevention, community engagement, and social justice for high school teens. The Worcester Arts Council supported uh, Hannah Lipper, business owner and local artist, uh, as they created an interactive wall-mounted structure in the South High School's School Health Services program. Uh, and last but not least, the Springfield Cultural Council supported Sierra Simmons in an after-school program by Dr. King, uh, for Dr. King Day in 2023, inviting youth, adults, parents, legislators, and local leaders to see the impact of arts education on the city students through performances. Um, the photo we have here is the Somerville Open Studios 2022, a uh, photo provided by our very own Timothea. Um, all of these projects may or may not have already happened. Um, this is what I pulled from what we just funded last year. Uh, this is just 
a random five from different um, granting levels. Some of these are granted a lot. Some of these are granted a good amount, but not as much. Um, some of these work with individual artists. Some of these are in a school. Um, some of these are a, a town-wide festival. So just to kind of give you an idea of how varied uh, the programs that the LCC's funds are. As for the timeline, this is what you'll expect. So September 1st, which just happened, uh, that's the day the application went live. The LCCs have also updated their own local guidelines and priorities, as well as their contact information on their public page. We'll go over how to access that in a couple slides. Uh, the deadline for the application is October 17th at 11.59 p.m. This is a hard deadline, so please stick with that. And then from November to December, uh, the councils will hold meetings to review applications and vote on them. Uh, local cultural councils will also send their de denial letters to applicants that are not funded. If you yourself receive a denial, you will have 15 days to request a reconsideration. Um, after every denied applicant gets their 15 day waiting period, then the council can begin sending out approvals. So on January 17th, that's the deadline for the councils to file their annual report, uh, as well as to send notifications and decisions to applicants. So let's talk about eligibility. Who is eligible, eligible to apply for a local cultural council grant? So first and foremost, applicants must reside or be located in Massachusetts. Uh, local cultural councils may accept applications from anyone included in the list below. Individuals, uh, incorporated private nonprofit organizations. So that was pretty clear. It's any nonprofit. Uh, unincorporated associations that can establish a nonprofit objective. So for example, a community band or theater groups. Uh, new this year, incorporated for-profit organizations. So corporations, partnerships, LLCs, not to be confused with LCCs, uh, tribal, federal, state, and municipal government organizations. Uh, so, you know, public schools, libraries, other municipal agencies can apply to us, as well as the local cultural council themselves. Religious organizations are eligible to apply for the local cultural council program. While LCCs cannot fund activities that are inherently religious, such as religious worship, instruction, and proselytization, um, otherwise, as long as the program is both available to and benefits the general public and not the religious organization, they're eligible to receive funding. Um, so let's talk about Funding criteria. Uh, there's, we'll talk about the first three rules really quickly. Um, and these are kind of buckets that we're looking at. So uh, first, a project must belong to the arts, humanities, and the sciences, or like related to that. That's pretty vague. It's um, vague on purpose. Uh, this is just, you know, this kind of relates to public benefit. Um, but arts, humanities, and sciences kind of hits most of what you're thinking of. Um, the public benefit. Uh, local cultural council funds must be used to support activities that contribute to the cultural vitality of the community rather than benefiting any private or individual group. However, this does not mean that a large crowd of people needs to participate to satisfy the public benefit requirement. Um, when it comes to public benefit, uh, like it said, it's not really about most people or serving every single person. Um, you know, we at, we on the state level are not telling local cultural councils, um, you know, you can't do a project at the senior center that's not public benefiting enough. Um, as long as it's not exclusionary to anybody, as long as uh, it's open and available for anybody to join, even if you're doing something that is geared for, say, a class for seniors at the senior center, if anybody is able to join and anybody is able to go in and, you know, learn something senior or not, that's A-OK, -okay. that's totally fine. It's fine for projects to be focused towards a group, just not make sure they're not exclusionary. 
Uh, again, if you have any questions about these, if that was really vague, if you want to follow up, if you have any ideas, uh, reach out directly to your local cultural council and also our staff. Um, another criteria is non-discrimination. Um, this one's pretty clear cut. Uh, local cultural councils may not discriminate against uh, applicants or programs on the basis of age, ability, ethnicity, race, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, nationality, geographic origin, or immigration, military, socioeconomic status. Um, not only are the LCCs not able to, uh, they're not allowed to do any of those, they're not allowed to discriminate against uh, all of those types of people, um, they cannot also cannot fund programs that do so. Um, so just a heads up. Uh, the fourth point is just their own local criteria. So we have these three, right, that everybody should and should be following. Um, but each local cultural council will also have their own guidelines and priorities. Uh, I'll be walking you through how to access a specific council's guidelines uh, before you apply. Uh, in regards of the money itself, so you know, you got approved for a grant from a local cultural council, and now you're ready to be reimbursed. You're ready to, you know, start collecting your receipts so that you can make sure that you get all your money back. Um, we have only two restrictions on what the money cannot be spent on. First is a restriction on refreshments. Funds from a local cultural council may not be used to purchase food or beverages, period. Alcoholic, non-alcoholic, sandwiches, pizzas, bagels, whatever. It cannot be used to purchase food or beverages, period. It's fine if the event that it's at is uh, has refreshments. You know, it's okay if you're funding a day in the park and the local cultural council is funding the paint and somebody else is, you know, somebody else is fun funding the food. That's fine. It's just the local cultural council money cannot be used to pay for the food or the beverages. The second is scholarships, which is a little confusing, but just bear with me. So um, a student themselves cannot apply for a scholarship from a local cultural council. However, if an organization wanted to apply to sponsor a scholarship, as long as the council feels it's, it provides sufficient public benefit, it meets all other state and local criteria, that's totally fine. So for example, if a school wanted to apply to an LCC to sponsor a reading scholarship or something like that, that's all right. Uh, we just don't want, you know, I'm Gelmi, I'm going to college next year, I'm going to apply to a cultural council for a scholarship for $500. That's not okay. Uh, I know I'm going through these a little fast and we'll be going through, there's a lot of text to kind of go through, but uh, don't worry. Again, you'll have access to all of this after the meeting. Uh, we'll send out these resources as well. You don't have to copy and paste or type any of these links. We'll be sending all of this information out as well. Um, so first we have our LCC guidelines. Now, whenever anybody asks me any question, uh, this is the first place I check. Uh, a lot of this PowerPoint is actually taken from this document. We don't expect everybody to know this front and back like we do. So if there's any questions, anything that seems confusing or vague, or you just need some explanation, reach out to us. Uh, so we're going to go check out eligibility. So it'll bring you down here. You, some of this uh, is familiar to you, you know, types of grants, et cetera. We're going to look at program eligibility. Applicants may apply for grants for programs that take place during an 18th month window of eligibility from July 1st, preceding the application deadline in October through December 31st of the following year. This means you're able to apply for projects that have already happened or before you know whether or not you're approved with the knowledge that funding is not guaranteed. So even though our funding, even though our grant cycle is open from September 1st to October 17th, you're able to uh, apply for programs outside of that application cycle. You can apply for programs that have happened um, from July 1st on, um, you can apply for reimbursement. You can also apply for programs that are going to happen after October uh, and uh, through December 31st of the following year. So today you can apply for a program that will happen 
up until December 31st, 2020, whatever next year is, 2025, 2024. Um, LCCs themselves are authorized to establish a smaller window. Uh, if they do so, it'll be on the website where you can find their priorities, which we'll go through as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, the second link. Let's find their local priorities. Um, oh, come up, come up. There we go. So here we've got this page, find your LCC. This is on our Mass Cultural Council website. Uh, here is the full list of our local cultural councils that um, all of them are available this year. So we're going to go to Bedford because Bedford's awesome. Um, and here you can see their name, uh, oops, their name, uh, a description of who they are, their contact information. Uh, Barbara, she's awesome. She's over at Bedford Cultural Council. She's their chair. Um, phone number you can reach them at. Uh, this is the website link for uh, sometimes towns and cities will have a link for the cultural council themselves as well on their website. This is just a link to that. This is their address. This is where you can connect with them on social media. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit more, you can find their allocation. Now let's look at their priorities and their guidelines. Um, so priorities are things that looking for that priorities are things that this council is looking for that may or may not align with the projects that you're thinking of. Uh, so for example, Bedford is looking for nonprofit organizations and projects inv involving local artists, uh, as well as some other things. I would highly recommend you read through all of this uh, if you're going to apply for Bedford. Um, their guidelines, scroll down a little bit more, is we'll see um, things that they like require. So for example, if you're a non-resident individual or a non-resident organization, uh, if you want your program to occur in Bedford, you must have a local sponsor and a letter from that sponsor. Um, you need to advertise the event. Uh, there, If you have a project done on the town property, it requires prior approval. Um, so this is that type of stuff that you can just kind of look through uh, and get oriented with. And then um, here we've got an FAQ for applicants. Um, so this here is really just, uh, oh, do you have any questions? Do you have, uh, maybe you've got somebody who um, is interested in the local cultural council program uh, and you're, you know, they're asking you 40 questions. This is a great place to start. Um, this has a lot of the links that I'm showing you, a lot of the information that I'm showing you as well. Uh, there's a sample application form, so you can kind of take a look at it. Um, register for the info session happening right now, um, and just more information as you're going as you're going through it. Um, Will you can look at this on your own time? Cool. Okay, so breathe. That was a lot of talking. I'm going to just grab some water really quick. Um, we're going to, when my camera focuses, we're going to be going through uh, the process of what it's like to apply to a council, apply to a local cultural council grant, both as an individual and as an organization. Right. So um, this is our login page massculturalcouncil.smartsimple.com. Uh, this is where you'll access our grants management system and where everything lives. This is where we're looking for all applications. This is where the local cultural council also logs in. Um, you don't have to memorize that link. You can actually also, so if we go back to Bedford uh, and we scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see apply now. We're gonna click this button, bam. We're right where we need to be. So we're going to we're going to do something that I thought was smart, uh, but we're actually just going to bring this window back. Um, so this is what it looks like. This is the login page. This is where you put in your email and password. Let's say you're new to the system. Let's say you you know I'm new. I'm new to Mass Cultural Council. Let's start. So we're going to go click register. And then here we've got two options to register. If you're an individual or if you're an organization, 
we'll do individual first. But we go here. And then from here, uh, you've got some information here, you know, uh, to register below uh, your first name, your last name, you've got stuff that's starred that's got that little red star is um, not optional that's required pronouns, email, phone, website, you know, if you're, uh, if you're a working artist, if you're, um, you know, doing anything that you have a website for, you can put this uh, on the registration information. Are you entering a Massachusetts address? Yes, needed. And then it'll give you some more info from there. Um, state, zip, uh, race and ethnicity. So this optional demographics information, um, we, this is totally optional. We're including this to see who we're reaching and who we aren't. If you don't want to answer, you can go here and you can click skip question. Do you identify as a person who is deaf or has a disability? Skip question. Do you identify as transgender? Skip question. But because these are required, you're going to have to say skip question to all of them. And that's totally all right. You know, it's totally optional. Um, and then terms and conditions, uh, take a read through terms and conditions and privacy policy. Um, you can click, I agree. And then would so recommend to be signed up to mass cultural council's monthly e-newsletter. You can unsubscribe later. If you are like, I don't like this newsletter. Um, then you click submit here. Um, if you click submit and you have anything blank, like I do, because I'm not going to, you know, fill everything out. Um, it's going to come up like this. It's going to tell you what exactly you're missing. So take another look and click submit. We're going to go back to the last page because I want to show you what it looks like to register as an organization. So I would like to apply for a grant on behalf of an organization. This would include schools, city or towns, unincorporated groups, etc. Uh, so we're going to click organization. Uh, and now here, it's, it, it looks a lot like what we just saw for individual, but when we click organization name, uh, we're going to type in, you know, Lynn Arts, Music and Media Foundation, like Classical High School, et cetera. Um, but let's say we're an organization, Lynn Bagel Company, um, and we're not found. We're not, we're not on this organizational list. Totally great. Totally fine. Don't worry about it. Up here, you'll see if you cannot find your organization in the list, you must register your organization manually using this form. So we're going to click that. We're going to follow that. Um, is your organization a for-profit entity, such as a business, corporation, or limited liability company? Yes. If it is not, click no. Um, this will not uh, this will not make you ineligible for applying for a local cultural council grant, as we've just gone over. Uh, for profit entities are able to apply for council grants. Um, this is just to kind of specify maybe we have some grants that are for nonprofits only. Maybe we have some grants that are available for everybody um, because this will put you in the system for all of our opportunities, not just local cultural council. Um, uh, you know, let's say, let's say Lynn Bagel Companies and no, maybe we're a nonprofit. So we're going to click submit. And then it's going to ask you, you know, to put in the organization name again the phone number of the organization, the website of the org, the address of the org, the city, the county, et cetera. You'll go through all of this like you're filling it out for the organization. Uh, the tax ID number, the legal status. Um, do you operate under a parent organization? Um, and then you yourself will put your own contact information. So now this is where I'm putting in Gelmi stuff, um, my title, email, phone number. Um, here you'll check this box if you're an executive director or equivalent, uh, and then you'll check this box if you're an accessibility coordinator or equivalent. Um, and then it, same as earlier, terms and conditions. Uh, once you read them through and you agree, click I agree. Again, I would recommend that you be signed up to our monthly e-newsletters, uh, and then you click submit. A lot of this is blank, so clearly it's not going to let me submit. Uh, but we're going to go back. We're going to go back again. Uh, but let's say that our organization is on the list. Let's say that I'm working with Lynn Classical High School. Same thing. You would find them. You would type them out. You'd find them. Um, and then, you know, same thing as always. Like, this is your own contact information. Are you an executive director equivalent? Are you an accessibility coordinator? 
terms and conditions, and uh, sign up for the monthly e-newsletter. Cool. So we're going to take another step back. We're going to take a couple steps back, and we're going to come back to here. So, you know, we are happy and healthy, and we've, uh, we're ready to join, to log into the council, uh, to log into the page. Of course, I've got to re-put my password in um, because it's been a long time. Tech stuff, am I right? Great. So here we are. This is this is the page. This is where um, you log in. Welcome, Gelmi Espinal. That is me. Um, you'll see any current opportunities for individual. So just as a reminder, we're looking at this as an individual. We'll do organizational applying next. But for now, let's look at this. We're individuals. And here you see um, apply to local cultural council, my own profile, change password. You can log out on the top right. You'll get comfortable as you kind of kick around. Um, but for now, we're going to click apply to a local cultural council. And then it might take a second because it's going to load a lot of stuff. Uh, but we'll just give it some time. We'll let it chug at its own pace. Here we are. Uh, so again, just a reminder, deadline is October 17th. Um, and we will look at, we've got a lot of cultural councils here. Um, you can click here to search them, right? So I'm going to click Lynn, search, Lynn Cultural Council, Lynn Field Cultural Council. I'm going to clear the search for now. I didn't expect it would freeze. I'm trying to clear the search. Cool. Beautiful. Um, and then we're going to go, I'm going to go to Bedford. And I'm going to apply now. So here we have a new grant. We have a eligibility, pre-eligibility. Um, we're just asking you some questions to make sure you're paying attention, to make sure that this is uh, something that you're able to apply to. But, you know, the first question, does the proposed project meet the Mass Cultural Council's definition of arts, humanities, or science? Yes. Um, does it provide a public benefit? to the community as a whole rather than benefiting a single individual or group? Yes. Do you reside in Massachusetts? Yes. Are you applying on behalf of a religious organization or a group with a religious affiliation? Uh, I'm gonna say no, but if you click yes, it'll ask you more, more questions just to make sure, is it available to the general public, et cetera. So I'm gonna just click no for now. Does the project project or program discriminate or discourage? No, it does not. Is project or program accessible to persons with disabilities? Yes. Will LCC grant funds be used to purchase food or refreshments? No, it will not. And then have I read the guidelines as well as the council priorities of this specific council? Yes, I have. We're gonna click save draft. Save draft is gonna be our favorite button here. Uh, we're gonna be clicking it a lot. So we're gonna click save draft. And then we've got a new button here called check eligibility. So we're going to click that as well. It's going to take a second and it's pretty much just going to tell us whether or not we're all good to continue. You have successfully completed the eligibility quiz. Click on proceed to begin the application. Here we are. This is what we look like. This is where we are. Um, here's our um, project ID. Here's our contact information. Here's our, uh, this is from, from here, this is where we can really get started. Um, feel free, please, not feel free, please read all of the informa informative things on the top here. I'm just kind of skipping them because I know what they say. I've read them a hundred times, um, but I would recommend, you know, take your time, take a look. Um, let's say, pro, you know, we're requesting $500. This is where you would put the amount that you're requesting to the cultural council. Your project discipline, what kind of program is it? Um, I'll do photography because it was there. The title, we've got title here. When will it take place? Where will it take place? Estimated number of people served. Um, does it primarily serve school children? Um, and then we're gonna go over to project overview. So the thing that's important is that as you're doing this, as you're doing page by page by page, click save draft. Click it, you'll love it, it'll be your best friend. Just keep clicking it. We're gonna go to project overview. You can summarize the program. Uh, you've got 900 characters, just what is it? What are you looking to do? Um, 
and then we've got other questions here that might uh, that you might just be copy and pasting from your summary, and that's a okay. Who's your target audience? Uh, what is the cost of participation? How does the proposed project provide public benefit? Uh, and how does it contribute to the cultural vitality of the local community as a whole? Please address actions the proposed project includes to advance diversity, equity, inclusion, and or access. Uh, and then here, if you, in case you've forgotten, in case, you know, public benefit is still a little vague to you, uh, we've got a little example here, public benefit. Uh, please describe the qualification of key artists, humanists, interpretive scientists, or organizations involved with leading the cultural component of this project. Um, you know, this can be you yourself. Uh, maybe you're uh, filling out this application on behalf of somebody else. Um, but, you know, if you're an artist or you're a teacher, or you're a scientist, you can say like me, this is me, this is who I am. Uh, put your, this is where you would put some website information. This is where you would say this, these are my qualifications. Uh, this is why the person I'm inviting, they know what they're talking about. Um, and then, you know, this one's not a required question, uh, but it, I think it's still important to fill out if it's relevant, uh, if it's relevant to you. If there are any other individuals or orgs that will be involved in the projects as planners, partners, or collaborate, collaborators, please list them below. Um, and then you can also distinguish between those who have made a firm commitment and those with tentative or potential involvement. How are you planning to promote the project to the community and your target audience? You know, this would be your marketing, your social media, you know, do you have an idea of what that marketing would look like? Are you doing like a monthly blast out to residents of the town? Um, so then I'm done typing, click save draft. Let's go to budget. This is this is the important one. So when we're looking at budget, there's this green button here that says project budget. We're going to click that. This is where you'll be able to put your budget in line by line by line. So we're going to add row. Uh, if you've got a couple of things, you can just add a bunch of rows, maybe up front. Uh, but let's say I want to pay the artist humanist scientists that are coming by. And then it could just be as simple as B, you know, $300 for their time, whatever, whatever it happens to be. Uh, our marketing, uh, printing flyers, uh, we'll say 80 bucks. Uh, and then we'll do uh, equipment rental or entering access, like cost for an ASL interpreter or uh, production, space rental, you know, say this is uh, 130, 120. I didn't do that math right. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to click save on the little pop-up window. Uh, oh, we'll want to remove that row then. You can't have any empty rows. So we'll click save. We can close it on the top right here. And then you'll see it here, project budget. Uh, you know, here are your expenses, you know, here's the description, et cetera. The important thing about project budget is that it does not have to match what you're asking. Um, so local cultural councils do want to see all of the costs because it helps them to make a financial decision. Um, let's say this program actually costs $2,000, but I'm only asking the cultural council to front just the 500. That's okay, and that's the information that they and we would love to see. Uh, income, this is where um, other sources of income that you need to complete this project, that you're, you know, other grants you're applying to, maybe the school is offering a couple hundred dollars, maybe you've got fundraising happening and you've already, you know, where where else are you getting, if, if your program is $2,000, and you're asking for 500, where's the rest of it? Where's the rest of it coming from? In-kind support. So this would be any donations you're getting, anybody who is um, performing for free or anybody who is, um, you know, doing the printing for you and they're going to pay the flyers out of pocket. Like this is where that would be. How will you adjust the project if the council cannot fund the entire amount you're requesting? Um, so will you scale your program back? Will you make it a little smaller? Will you um, look out for more funding? Are you going to change the program? Uh, we just want to be sure that if 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 the 
council chooses not to fund the program, that you've still got plans for what will happen without that money. And then if you've applied to uh, other local cultural councils, please list the names of these councils below. Um, this would be just for that specific program. So if you've applied to other councils for different programs, you don't have to. This would be just for this program that you're applying to. And then save draft. We always want to click save draft. Uh, additional materials. So if you remember, uh, the Bedford Cultural Council in their guidelines requires that non-residents of Bedford uh, submit as well a letter of support, a letter of intent from uh, from a community partner, uh, from a business that's there, from, they, they've got some examples on their website. This is where I could uh, put that letter if I have it as a PDF. Wow, this autofocus is really not great, huh? This is where I would put that letter as a PDF. Uh, you could click here to browse your files. You can drag and drop a file directly on here. Uh, this is where you would put that. And then they would have that as well so they could see that letter. Uh, and then once we put it in, we save draft. So then we go to acknowledgement. This is the moment where uh, you want to take a second to double check everything. This is uh, where once you click submit, you will no longer have access to the application. You can't make any changes. You can't you can't do anything. Um, and then once you click I agree, and then you click submit, you can click save draft again. And then you click submit. Um, you should receive an email uh, that says you have successfully submitted your application or something. You'll see, congratulations, you have successfully committed submitted your application. Um, I will not be clicking submit because I've got a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, empty fields here. Something that I would suggest before you click submit, while you're here, if you click here, application summary, uh, it'll pop up a PDF of everything you filled out. So this is a copy. You can save it for your own records. You can print it for your own records. Um, if you aren't able to access this, reach out to us and then we'll help you out. We'll make, we, we have access to it and we can make sure to get that to you uh, as soon as possible. Cool. So this is what it looks like when you're applying as an individual. If you click the top left for Mass Cultural Council, we're gonna leave. Um, you'll see applications in one is in progress, submitted, approved, et cetera. This is from where you can kind of find uh, the life of, of your application. Um, and a lot of these will become relevant as you apply to other and different programs and grants. So I'm going to sign out from here. We're going to look at what it's like to sign in uh, as in as an organization or with an organizational profile. Um, great. So we're going to log in. So this is me again. This is Gelmi Espinal again. Um, but now I'm with an organization. You know, uh, this is you can click here to see the organizational profile. Uh, but most of this looks the exact same. Uh, you can actually see current opportunities are here for two. Uh, and then apply to a local cultural council, works the same way. We click it, we give it like a minute to load, and then we click, uh, we'll click to apply for, for a local cultural council. Um, and then at that point, the, let's go back to Bedford. We're just gonna keep bothering Bedford. Um, you once again, get the pre-eligibility quiz uh, that you can kind of take a look at. Um, and again, the process is the exact same. Um, cool, so I won't be going over it. A lot of it is very, very similar. Um, great, so we saw the homepage, we saw the application. We're gonna kick over to the next slide. Um, great, um, here are some tips and suggestions as you're uh, filling out your, your application and your and uh, for your programming, uh, start early. You know, just get that as soon as you're just just get started. I'm not saying finish your application in a weekend. You know, I'm saying get started, get comfortable, make sure that you've logged into the system so that nothing is scary and weird to you. If anything looks different than what we've just seen, 
reach out to us on the team. Uh, we can help you out if anything looks wonky or weird or you're like, why don't I see uh, where to apply for a cultural council? That's what we're here for. Uh, do your research. So when it's a-okay, it's lovely, we love it when people apply to multiple cultural councils. Um, just be sure that you're not that you're doing your research for each. Be sure that all of them are uh, that you're doing their guidelines well. That you're uh, keeping the priorities in mind. Uh, don't just copy and paste an existing proposal. Um, all of our cultural councils are able to have their own guidelines and priorities, and because of that, a lot of them have different requirements that they need. Um, if there's anything you ever need. Uh, you can always reach out to local cultural council members, and then you can also reach out to us, to uh, program staff. Uh, reach out to potential partners and host venues. Um, you can do this in the middle, before you're filling out the application. Um, partners and host venues uh, make an application stronger um, because then we can sit, start seeing like, oh, this is where that public benefit aspect is coming in. Uh, partners can be any of anybody. You know, we've we've seen schools as partners, religious organizations as partners, corporations as partners. Um, you know, you can begin talking, uh, and then create a realistic budget. Um, so this one I think is very self-explanatory. Um, cultural councils only have so much funds in a year to be able to allocate, uh, and so if you're creating your budget. And you're thinking about, you know, be be upfront with what your budget is, but also for yourself, if you're applying for 500 and you get the 500, but then you realize like, oh, there's so many costs that I didn't consider, I can't do this program. That's okay. That happens. Life happens. Um, you'll return the money back to the program, uh, to the to the council, and then we'll reuse it for next year. But we would much rather appreciate that um, you have like realistic goals for yourself so that you put on the program because we want to see you put on that program as well. Um, great. Um, other funding opportunities. So we're not the only we're not we're not the only program here at Mass Cultural Council. Uh, you can look at our programs at a glance. It'll show you all of the programs that we have available. Um, for example, the two that are coming up, the STARS Residencies opens up on September 21st and it closes on October 24th. Uh, these are residencies that bring students and teachers together with practicing artists, scientists, humanists in K through 12 classrooms. Um, and then the second one is Grants for Creative Individuals. This one's new. Uh, this opens in October and it closes in December. It is $5,000 in unrestricted grants. This program aims to equitably advance creative expression throughout the Commonwealth with unrestricted grants to Massachusetts artists, culture bearers, and creative individuals. Um, look more on the website. I don't have any information on those, so I can't answer any of those questions. Um, but that's what um, we've got two grants that are coming up. Would so recommend you uh, apply if it is if you're eligible. And then we have so many questions. Thank you so much to everybody. We have, I see already 33 other questions in the Q&A. Wow, I look so orange, look at me. I, uh, but we're not gonna be able to get to all of them. I'm so sorry. Um, please take a second, maybe copy and paste your question. Here's all of our email addresses. Uh, I will be sending this slideshow. I will be sending uh, a YouTube video to everybody who was registered to this, uh, to this uh, webinar. Um, we are so, so happy to have you, uh, and we would love to answer all of your questions. We currently are just unable to answer all of them uh, because we do want to make sure everybody's time is respected, and we will be logging off soon. Um, thank you, everybody, again, for attending, um, and please, please reach out back to us. We, we see you've got more questions, um, but I think at this point we've, we've uh, answered all that we can. Um, and I, I'm just glancing through a lot of these. A lot of these seem to be, uh, questions that we have answered. So I hope, I hope that all of your questions have been answered. Thank you, everybody.